Welcome to Wick Wicked Works. <laughs> Today is an episode all about Cora. So you may remember my 59 patina beetle. Um, we are going to be talking about the semaphores. We've got new semaphores. We're going to be talking about speedometers. I removed my original speedometer and I've got a whole bunch of trash ones that we're going to pull apart, look at the guts of, um, and then an update on my metal work. Um, you can see what's going on with the car. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked works. <laughs> Okay, so I think we're ready to dive into this treasure trove of uh, really crappy speedometers. So um, Taylor and I were uh, bamboozled into paying money for a bus load of parts that were pretty crappy. So um, as I was going through it, I found um, eight speedometers and we are gonna take a look at them. Here they are in all their glory. So I'll go over the dates in just a second. I have arranged these chronologically, starting with the oldest here, going older and then back down here to some late model ones. Um, so we'll get into the years and the differences between them, but I also just removed the Speedo from Cora from my 59. So this one, um, my goal is to restore this one. So I want to replace the glass, obviously. I want to clean it up because it's looking a little rusty. Um, and then I'm curious to see what it looks like when the glass is off, if I can do some surface cleaning underneath. Um, I'd like to also take the face off and lubricate those, um, the tension spring behind the needle. So um, as you can see, we've got some pretty gnarly things here. I mean, this is busted. Not only has it had water in it up to that mark, <laughs> but you can see like inside it's got, it's just really corroded and gross. Um, so we're going to sacrifice some of the, the really disgusting ones for science. And um, my goal is to break this down and show you what the inside looks like. So for our dates here, this guy is April of 62. And in case you're not familiar with it here, I've labeled the Speedo because it's sometimes it's hard to see. And this one was one of the ones that was really difficult. So we use a wire brush and down here, um, holding it at just the right angle in the light of the 4 p.m. sun, we were able to see that date. Um, but I think like on this one, it's, it's easy. So let's see here, yeah. So this one right here, um, this one is February of 69. Um, so that's how we've gone through and dated them all, or I have. Um, so we've got 62, 62 uh june of 63 this is october of 63 making it a 64 model we've got march of 65 we are missing 66 but i do have a 67 um this is november of 66 again making it that 67 model um we've got 10 october of 67 making it a 68 we've got again the february of 69 and then this friend um, is 10 October of 70, making it a 71. So um, kind of cool that out of these eight speedometers that we've kind of got a run of uh, a sequential run of many years. Um, so you can see here that our late model ones, the 69 uh, and the 71, oh, I'm sorry, actually, the 68, the 69 and the 71, it's hard to even see anything in there. These all have a fuel gauge in there. Um, we have a couple of other fun things. So we've got our high beam indicator, uh, ATF um, automatic transmission fluid. Taylor's telling me for auto stick. Um, your usual um, oil pressure generator, um, 
directional indicator. And then this, um, I believe, was the defroster heater. Um, and we were thinking this was running lights. So if we compare that to um, one of the earlier ones, so we'll go to my um, early one. Um, this one is the one, again, from Cora. It was September of um, 58 again for that 59 model so it's significantly uh, simpler right um, and you'll notice that needle is different for that early early one as well i think um, obviously mine is earlier than any of the other ones here and you can see they've got those orange needles instead of the glass one that mine has um, but in any case we've got a really simple little light here for the high beam uh, no icon on it and then we still have that trio at the bottom for oil pressure generator and the um, directional indicator so um, again because i want to be really gentle with this one that i'll hopefully be able to use in my car um, let's tear one of these down okay so I've looked at all of my Speedos and I've chosen the 63 because it is the most significantly crunchy and previously flooded. So we're gonna take this thing apart. Um, on the back here, we have these two screws that are gonna come out and we've got some electrical connections um, for those different lights that I talked about before. Um, so let's start pulling this thing apart. I'm really curious to tear down one of these Speedos that's all but trash because um, I'm gonna tear it down more than what I'm actually going to do, uh, hopefully to restore my own. Um, I kinda wanna, I'm, I saw some things in the forums about this and so I'm curious to look at the guts because that's what my science brain does. Please, fetch me a tool. <laughs> all right, yeah. My assistant here. Um, okay, so we've removed those two screws. Um, I was checking out in my car um, where the Speedo cable runs to, and uh, it's a cool system. It's mechanical, and it goes uh, inside to that front wheel. Okay, so um, we have to just pry this up. And so there's a gasket on the inside of this. Three hours later, yeah, so the lip is a little like folded over on either end of these um, U-shaped brackets that hold it into the car. Come on, little feller. Just pop right out. Cut to us and you to the hospital with, with a screwdriver stuck in your thumb. <laughs> if I have a screwdriver stuck in my thumb. Oh, wow, that got real sudden. Some good momentum. Oh, screwdriver stuck in my thumb ball. We got other problems here. Yeah. You're spending that in the box. Namely, why you've been sharpening your screwdrivers. For the love of God, please just come off. Someone mentioned that they had a, a Speedo they had already done this to, um, to replace the glass, and that when they broke it down a second time, that it came off easier. I can't imagine why. Also, I'm really glad I'm not welding right now. It's really warm. Oh. Yeah, tell me about it. That's disgusting. Is that mold? Don't touch it, you sicko. Why not? I'm not going to lick it. it? <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at what I mangled. So um, this is how it was on, right? So on the inside, we've got this metal ring that would fit in, that bevel. Okay. And then we have the, there were two, supposed to be two of these, I believe. So you got one and then two. So we had our bevel, we had this little seal, and then an O-ring, and then the, uh, the piece of metal. All right, and then we've got our glass. And I did kind of ding the edge of it. Um, this could still get cleaned up. You can't, this isn't, this edge won't be visible. So, okay, let's, Take a look now that we've removed those two screws. See if we can pull this baby out. So theoretically, we've got some connections for the electrical and that speedo cable. Oh, 
so it was coming out. Oh, there goes our, these are the, the gels, I guess they're called, that go over the little lights. And you can see this one for the, um, the blinker or the turn signal, and then the uh, oil pressure is totally burned through. Gross. Um, I guess that's another common thing that people restore on these. They'll fix the glass, um, obviously lubricate the spring that we'll look at later, and then these little gels get replaced because they get burned out. This thing on the interior, will s again, when I finally get this apart, we'll see that there's actually a sleeve that descends into it. And I think the reason why I was confused before Taylor corrected me is because I was looking for that sleeve and this was protruding. So can we look up the etymology of phenolic? I don't even know how to spell it. P-H-E-N, ow. Ow is not in the uh, Roman <laughs> alphabet. Honestly, I wonder if you couldn't get um, some side cutters under that thing and pry it up. Can you fetch me some side cutters? Sure. Mm, probably, ooh, look at you, suggesting the tool for the job. Okay. Right in the eye. Oh, there you go, push yeah. On. All right, so we're pushing on the speedo cable. Yeah, you, might, uh, you might have to employ uh, the patented Wicked Works Brute Force and Ignorance. Um, I don't have a, uh, uh -huh. a BFH. Oh, you don't need to be a I need, you a... need a mini Tanya Harding. <laughs> okay, please. Or, you know, you'd be a lawless monkey and just... I don't think that has the the right surface area for... Well, you would if you did down here instead of the end of it. Well, you... Whoa, whoa. Mm. I'm not used to wailing on things with tools designed for other purposes <laughs> like you are. Now you are. And now I am. Okay, so here was that tube. The tube. Yes, okay, so let's orient ourselves. So we are right side up with the face. No, nope, that's completely upside down. We are right side up with the face, okay? And the speedo cable's coming out like that. So this is oriented like that. And of course, we've got our housing for our lights. Um, so it looks like, oh, there was a bulb that came out. So this was the bulb that was in this thing. Um, actually, I think it'll still fit in there. Yeah, cool, check that out. Um, so this was the light behind the high beams right here. And that had this little tube. And I've still got two little bulbs in here for um, the generator and the oil pressure. I don't know why I'm being so Southern. Okay, let's flip this over. So, um, we've got our numbers. We've got our set of gears. Um, I did read that um, the gears in the sequence here that move the numbers for your odometer, they have a series of larger and smaller tines on this gear. Um, and so when you, if you were going to do something like reset your odometer, um, you would need to make sure that all the big tines are lined up and all the small ones are lined up. Um, so those need to be in order. Um, we've got this brass gear here. These are my worm gears I was very excited to learn about, uh, which is directly fed by the input from that mechanical speedometer cable attached to that front driver's side wheel. Um, so again, it is possible to move this out a little and you can adjust those numbers if you are so inclined. I am not inclined to do that. Um, so we wanna get um, underneath here. So our spring is inside of here and the tension from this spring um, is responsible for um, the the movement of our um, our speedo needle. Um, one thing that I was reading is that um, if you're going to remove your needle um, and then put it back on, you need to find a 
baseline for where the needle sits with the spring tension. So what you want to do, and you have to be really careful because this needle is probably really brittle, um, but you should be able to move it um, on the other side of or below this little bumper, this little stopper right here um, that keeps your needle from going any further below zero. So let's see if we can do that without, oh, well, great. All right, well, it wasn't too brittle. It just moved right up. It's supposed to lift right off. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that it's just so gross. Can you give it a go? Do you want to try it? Yeah, sure. All right. Smash. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Um, Good luck getting that back on. Well, yeah, that's not really. It wasn't really the goal. Um, okay, so we've got our little brass friend here. Um, it does have super, super tiny little splines in there. And as Taylor said, yeah, good luck getting that back on. Um, so something I was reading is that um, if you are having trouble with your needle sticking, that um, you could try, uh, even before taking your needle off, going back here and um, spraying um, some kind of like lubricant or something um, behind here, that this might help a stuck needle. Um, so you could probably get something behind there. Okay, so we've got these teeny tiny little screws, one and two, and I'm gonna try to take those off, see if we can get this face plate out. Yay, more screws that turn. Okay, so this right here, this is the spring um, where all the magic happens. So that spring is super important. Um, and as you can see, this little brass thing, the other end of it right there, needs to come off so that we can take the face off. This is, this is why people don't take their speedometers apart, because it's a pain. Do you wanna have a go at this? Sure. Please. No, no, stay there. It'll look like your hands. It'll look like you have four hands. I've been working out. Mm. Oh, this is so scary. My hand strength has increased by 30%. I'm allowed to use that accent because I'm from the South. My chicken capacity has increased twofold. Don't talk about my chicken capacity. <laughs> Aha, there we go. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Oh, things are happening. All right, so that's loosening up. Got the whole face still flopping around here because I can't get the <laughs> can't get that thing off. All right, folks, there we go. So uh, we have removed the guts. Um, this is kind of cool. So we've got the gear this is the worm gear that directly runs the whole speedo and it's interesting because it's plastic is it interesting to you that it's plastic um no it, it kind of makes sense does it yeah why tell me tell me the material properties of plastic that would make it the ideal component it's not, for it's this not necessarily the material properties so uh, so much as the cost, cost. Eh, you know as soon as i said that i realized that was probably it just just doesn't want to come off you cut it i refuse just preserve this oh god don't worry i'm getting a vintage speed vintage speed what your mom okay <laughs> let me see so this is what i wanted to show everyone um now that this has been badly badly manhandled so just ignore this part that Taylor broke because it wouldn't come off. Um, so we've got our spring, which um, gives our needle its uh, motion dynamics, right? And this thing is super cool. So it looks like a miniature little stake that you would drive through a vampire's heart. And if you can see right here, the very end of that coil from the spring is fed through it. And that's what holds it together. Um, you can remove it, you should not remove it, and you probably shouldn't even get this far. Again, this is just a very 
disgusting, waterlogged speedometer that we have sacrificed for science. Um, we did remove the housing on this side. Um, I'm not really sure why you would want to do that, but um, it looks like the end of your needle, um, so this central thing right here is what's attached to your needle, and that fits directly into um, this little uh, hole right here, which is where your, your speedo cable feeds in, um, as well as having this gear that's going to attach to um, the other gearing ah, through this gear that I took off um, so that you are able to have your mileage tick as you are driving. So there you have it. Um, we are not going to even pretend to put this back together. This is, again, this is an experimentation for science to look at the guts of what's going on here. Um, I really enjoy looking uh, inside of things and, and like kind of understanding it. Um, so I was really lucky to have this kind of gross um, speedometer um, so that later on when I uh, go back to my original speedometer for Cora that I can, you know, pretty confidently, like now that I've, I've dissected this thing, um, I feel a lot more confident about um, gently taking off um, this metal so that I can replace my glass um, and uh, kind of clean up my face plate. Um, and then as you remember, um, when you have um, this inner mechanism out of the housing, um, without taking off the needle or the face plate, you can still spray some cleaner or some lubricant in there where the spring is um, without having to, again, remove the needle and the face plate and all that good stuff. So a little bit of servicing that you can do um, just by kind of removing this and taking the guts out of the main housing without having to break it all the way down. I don't really suggest doing that at all. Anyway, there we have it. Speed on. Hello. Today is a new day. <laughs> Uh, so yesterday I spent a lot of time completely murdering a speedometer. That was waterlogged, disgusting, terrible. Today, using that experience and what I've learned, I'm going to go with my original 59 Speedo out of Cora. And my goal for today is to clean up the corrosion around the chrome bits here. I've got some quad zero grade steel wool. Um, and I have cracked glass, so I'm going to need to gingerly take this um, bit off. And I have another Speedo that I purchased recently from that same lot um, that has a nice glass that I think I can clear up, clean up really nicely. Um, one thing that I noticed um, that I think I mentioned yesterday is that this um, moves, it wiggles a little bit, it's not corroded, so I think it should come off okay. Uh, we noticed something else. I don't know if you guys can hear this. Can you hear that? I almost had a heart attack yesterday when Taylor was like, why is it jingling? Didn't, didn't use that word, but uh, I think what's happened is that you can see here the back of my Speedo. It is missing the housing, I guess, for one of these bulbs. And this would be the, um, the high beam light. So I thought it was interesting on my 59, I didn't notice this yesterday, but the high beam light is this right here. And I don't have that ambient light that the slightly later ones do up at the top here. Instead, I've got two lights here. I think those are dual ambient lights that kind of shine around the face. Anyways, uh, what I'm saying is that bulb, I think is just hanging out loose in there. So when I do remove this, I'm expecting to be able to remove that bulb and the rest of it should be completely wonderful and intact. So let's dig in.
weathered or like compressed or whatever, aged to the point where they were like loose in there. Because, yeah, I can't wiggle this anymore. There's no wiggle room, but it feels like it's on there. Okay, I'm super happy with my gauge. And again, just for reference, this is the bezel that came out of it. Pretty gross. Yay! Okay. Things have happened since we were last here. I am rounding the bend with the home stretch of this particular metal patch under my driver side rear fender. So last time we looked at this, um, the bit um, to the right was what I was taking out. And if you recall, there were three layers of metal. So um, let me situate my light here. Um, so. I've been making patches out of cardboard and I had to make three separate patches and what's going on is that there is a layer that is actually behind this right here. So after I'm finished welding this, um, and this is, you know, flap and free on purpose, then I'm going to come back over and put another layer on top. And if you remember that this whole like panel bracket thing um, connects with this line. So that will be there. Um, I will show you the interior because as you can see, I had to make some additional cuts that I didn't necessarily want to make. So let's go look at the inside. Um, I want to show you, this is what my template looked like. Um, it's a little bit like a necktie or the state of Florida. Um, but this was, this is my template that I used uh, and my other template. And um, so I created this, um, this inner layer, the middle layer of metal. So uh, my next thing, I've got these really cool little thingy clamps. Um, so I'll be joining this, I'll be filling in this, and I'll be doing that. And then I have another piece to shape, got my template on it, so obviously that's pretty big. Um, that is, ah, oh gosh, it's going to go right there. Um, and then as you can see, I did not have a hole in my package tray. So what I needed to do was, um, be able to get back in here because as I started exploring, the rust just went like down on this, um, middle layer of, of uh, metal. This being the third layer is the edge of the package tray. And then you can see the interior right here. So I did have to cut this out for access to get the tools in here and I'll shine the light. So that's super fun looking. My piece that I dropped is down there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Um, so yeah, so we'll get, I will get, I keep saying we, like I have a team here. You do have a team here, shit can. <laughs> Oh, are you going to hand me the metal? Is this our teamwork happening? <gasps> Look at that. I feel like it's the Muppet Show or something. Um, so yeah, so that's going to go right there. Um, and there's going to be some priming and some stuff like that. Uh, and then I get to move to this side. Oh, there's the rest of my package tray there. Oh, that out of the way. Um, so this side's actually a tad bit worse. Um, but now I know that I'll be able to remove that seam seal and um, I'll be able to like dig in and pull the package tray back and instead of making two cuts I'll just make one cut on the side to the package tray so that my tools can access inside um, and we'll get that nice and cleaned up. <sighs> it's been real. On to the next rust bubble. Okay we're here at the bench with my brand new semaphores. So these came from ISP I got a pair of them. They are 12 volt because I'm gonna be converting the car from six volt. Um, so we just wanted to do like a side by side and look at them um, next to the one that was just removed. Um, so we don't think these semaphores ever worked, that they were immediately um, smushed into the car and bondoed over when it was federalized. Uh, and I... <laughs> Hi. Hi. I did um, break part of them when I was uh, chiseling them out, but um, yeah, so they would need to be painted or not painted, whatever. Um, 
It'd be cool to do the same color on the that you're going to do on the dash. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of doing the um, Mininet green that we think was my original car color on the dash and the interior. Um, and yeah, I agree. It would be really cool to have that stand out from the, the rest of the patina. Patina. Yes. So there you have it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Oh God, but I'm not on, I don't have the, the microphone. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like, leave a comment, share with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh God.